You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Hollywood Star Time. Today, for the first time on the air, Shock, starring Vincent Price and Lynn Berry with Michael Dunn. Each week at this time, Frigidaire brings you radio versions of Hollywood's finest motion pictures with Hollywood's greatest stars. Today, the first radio performance of the sensational new psychological drama, Shock, produced for the screen by 20th Century Fox, were also producers of Daryl F. Zanuck's Technicolor film, Lever to Heaven, starring Gene Tierney, Cornell Wilde, and Gene Crane. Now, in just a few moments, Shock. Frigidaire, the greatest name in refrigeration, is made only by General Motors. And it's this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator today. The seven million Frigidaires built and sold are the best proof of Frigidaire's outstanding record of dependability, of lasting satisfaction. For back of every great refrigeration principle pioneered by Frigidaire, back of every exciting new Frigidaire feature, back of every exclusive Frigidaire advantage, is one all-important purpose, to keep food good to eat. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember the record of millions of Frigidaires in millions of American kitchens. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. Now the first radio production of Shock, starring Vincent Price and Lynn Berry with Michael Dunn and featuring another brilliant musical score conceived and conducted by Alfred Newman. Shock. Shock. The word has been in my brain all night. Ever since last night at the Belmont Arms Residential Hotel, where I first saw Janet Stewart suffering from the classic symptoms of shock. Eyes staring blankly, skin cold and moist, pulse weak and rapid, blood pressure falling. Ever since that dreadful moment, I have felt that she knows the truth about me. Richard Cross, M.D. All night, the voice of my professor of psychiatry at medical school been coming back to me over the years, lecturing on shock. Shock? Shock, gentlemen, is a nervous reflex or psychic reaction which normally improves unless maintained by pain and physical or mental abuse. Remember that. Shock may be fatal only if not properly recognized and treated. The psychic shock is that type of shock brought on by excessive joy, grief, anger, or fear. Fear. Was that the cause of Janet Stewart's shock? I must know. Psychic shock requires psychiatric treatment. All fear and despair must be removed in the patient. A single tactless remark may turn the side against the patient. A single tactless remark. But time enough for that. After I found out certainly if Janet Stewart saw what I think she saw from her hotel window last night... I must know. Now. All right, Miss Jordan. Syringe. Yes, Doctor. I must find out. Dick, what happened last night? Don't call me Dick around the hospital. The door's closed. I don't care. The way things stand now, it might be fatal. But why? Just give me the hypodermic, Miss Jordan. Yes, Doctor. Now. So... Now, can you tell me what happened? Who is this woman? Where'd you find her? Where'd she pick up such a terrific condition of psychic shock? Why are you... The acting? drug is taking effect. Now, perhaps I'll have the answer to what I want to know in a moment. Mrs. Stewart, I am Dr. Richard Cross. I am your friend. 
You're in my sanatorium. You're receiving excellent care. Now, I want you to try to remember last night. Last night at about 11.30, you went to the Belmont Arms Apartment Hotel. Belmont Arms? You went there to meet your husband, who was scheduled to arrive from overseas. Paul? 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 You see, you can remember. Paul had been reported missing in action, then dead, then a Japanese prisoner. Dangerously ill. The burner's wall. Remember last night. His plane was late, the weather threatening. You were in a terrible state of nervousness and suspense. You couldn't sleep. Now, did you walk out on your balcony? I, I walked out on the balcony. Did you see anything? A man in the room across the court. They're crawling. He's hitting her with a candlestick. He's killing her. He's trying to kill his wife. Her husband is killing her. Stop him. Stop him. Stop him. That's all. Dick, what is this? She does know. She remembers Elaine. Dick, you... You killed Margaret. Yes. I couldn't stand it any longer. I... I meant to ask her for a divorce. She taunted me about you. She threatened to tell the newspapers to ruin us both. I lost my head. It was a heavy silver candle. Never mind, I heard the rest. She knows. She was standing in the window across from ours. She saw everything. In her dangerously nervous condition, she went into a state of psychic shock. Then, ironically, the house doctor called me. What about your wife? I've told the hotel manager that I'm joining my wife in the mountains and to ship my trunk up to the lodge. And the trunk? Yes. I'll be there to take care of it when it arrives. You're not sorry. Oh, Lane, I don't know. I I hadn't planned to kill her. Oh, I should have called the police, but I lost my head. Call the police and serve 20 years for manslaughter? Think what that would have done to us, Dick. Now we're safe. No. No, Janet Stewart's shock will wear off in two weeks. Then she'll remember without a sedative injection. She'll talk. Her shock will wear off only if you let it wear off. What? Think what about it, Dick. But her husband will be in tomorrow to see her. What will I tell him? <laughs> Dr. Cross, I've been through enough to be able to take it when I have to. You better let me have it straight. Can you help my wife? Well, Lieutenant, the human mind is a delicate and mysterious instrument. I can't easily answer your question because I don't know. All right. I discussed the thing with some of the Army doctors at the air base last night. They said I couldn't find a more expert man than you. They're very kind. One of the doctors said your only equal in these parts was Dr. Franklin Harvey at the university. Professor Harvey? <laughs> well, I studied under him. He's a fine man. Yeah. So I, uh, well, I asked him to take a hand in the case. Oh? He, he said he'd be glad to consult with you if you call him in on the case. I, I hope it's all right. Why, yes, of course. I'll have my assistant telephone him today. Oh, Miss Jordan. Doctor? Yes, I was just going to ring for you. I wanted to tell Lieutenant Stewart that Mrs. Stewart is sleeping quite easily now. Thank you, Miss Jordan. Come in Thursday morning, Lieutenant, and I'll have Dr. Harvey here to talk with you then. That's fine, Doctor. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Jordan. And don't worry, Lieutenant. What do you mean you'll have Dr. Harvey here to talk to him? Stewart asked for a consultant. Are you going to allow it? I had no other choice. Dr. Harvey will bring her out of her shock in a week. Oh, she'd come out anyhow. The thing to do is to try to make her forget what she saw. Make her forget. At all costs. Mrs. Stewart. Mrs. Stewart. Yes? Listen to me. You're out on that balcony again. You're looking across the court. They're quarreling. 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 You hear? He's striking her. Again. 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 
killing him. Again. 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 Now it's you. No. He's hitting you. Hitting you. Hitting you. Hitting you. Hitting you. Killing you. Killing you. Killing you. should do it, Elaine. It was an ordeal, even for me. Yes. Elaine, I... I won't be at the sanatorium tomorrow. I, I'm going to the lodge. Why? To receive the trunk when it comes and arrange things. Perhaps then we'll be safe. If there is any safety indeed anywhere. Anywhere. unforeseen has happened. While I was away at the lodge, Edwards, our only dangerously violent case, got loose in a thunderstorm. Terrified out of his remaining reason by the storm, he entered Mrs. Stewart's room. Began to strangle her when Elaine Jordan entered. Immediately, Edwards turned his murderous attentions to Elaine. Janet Stewart, of course, saw the wild, shadowy struggle lit by weird flashes of lightning, orchestrated by wildly crashing thunder. It brought everything back to her. He's killing her! Stop him! Stop him! He's murdering his wife! Her husband is killing her! Help! 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 He killed her. I saw him do it. I saw him do it. Too I bad, Miss Jordan. Yes, Dr. Hardy. He killed this her. This unfortunate affair will delay her recovery her. indefinitely. Perhaps mm. permanent. She keeps insisting that she saw a murder ever since Edwards nearly killed me. Hallucinations, of course. Too bad. Murder. 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 Great Scott, Miss Jordan. Have you seen the morning papers? Why, no, Dr. Harvey. Why? Dr. Cross's wife is dead. Dead? Killed in a mountain fall, it says. Oh. Oh, how dreadful. Coroner Jess Haynes has pronounced the death... Accidental, it says. Poor Dr. Cross. You saw the papers, Elaine? Yes, and it all worked out beautifully for us. Driving home from the lodge, I, I got to thinking about you. I offer the standard penny for your thoughts. I wondered, is Elaine worth what I've done? And the answer? It's no use, Elaine. I love you. A very satisfactory answer. Dick, everything's turning out so well, I can hardly believe it. When Edwards tried to kill me, everything came back to Janet Stewart. She remembered that night in the hotel again, but now everyone's convinced she's out of her head. Hallucinations, they all say. Now when she says she saw you kill someone, too, they'll just put it down as more of the same. I see. In fact, it might be well now if you encouraged her to talk and let her husband hear her, can convince him she ought to be committed to an institution. It's that easy. Try it. Go ahead, Lieutenant. Wake her up. Will she... Will she know me? Yes. The shock is gone. It's... Well, it's something else now. Janet. Janet, darling, it's... It's Paul. Paul? She knows me. She, she's all right. Jen and I'm here. I've been here for days. Paul. Is it really you? Yes, Mrs. Stewart. He's been here every day. Paul. He's the one. He killed her. He picked up a silver candlestick and hit her. You see, Lieutenant? Don't leave me, Paul. He'll kill me. He'll kill me. You better give her a hypodermic, Miss no. Gordon. No, I won't let you. I won't let you. go to my office, Lieutenant. No. Paul, come back. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't go away from me, It's simply and tragically this, Lieutenant. Delusions of persecution. She imagines herself caught in a den of murderers. It's only fair to warn you that her condition may become worse. 
Our immediate problem, therefore, is to arrest further deterioration of her mind. Doctor, doctor, you've got to do something for her. Everything in our power. Thank you, doctor. Oh, I, I'm so lost in my own problem. I haven't told you how, how sorry I am about your wife. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you. I'm Dr. Richard Cross. O'Neill, office of the district attorney. In a few moments, Frigidaire will bring you the second act of Shock, starring Lynn Barry and Vincent Price with Michael Dunn. Frigidaire, the first name you think of in a refrigerator, has won an outstanding reputation for developing better ways of keeping food. Every one of the great refrigeration principles pioneered by Frigidaire has this all-important purpose, to keep food good to eat. That's the reason the Frigidaire cold wall refrigerator is called the greatest advance in refrigeration in the past quarter century. Cold wall is an entirely new and different kind of refrigeration. It is a method of cooling right through the walls of the refrigerator instead of the usual metal freezer you're accustomed to seeing. When you look into the new Frigidaire cold wall, you see no freezer. You see no frost-covered coils. The door opens wide on sparkling shelves that extend clear across the interior. Then you feel the inside walls, and they're winter cold. And you notice something else. The air is moist and still, and you know that foods won't dry out, that they're guarded against wilting and shrinking, and you know, too, that this protects precious vitamins. You'll see that foods stay fresh, colorful, appetizing, without the bother of placing covers on them. And you'll learn that one food won't pick up the odor of another. Cold Wall is the result of years of research in food keeping, and only frigid air has it. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For frigid air is made only by General Motors. <laughs> We continue with the first radio production of Shock, starring Vincent Price and Lynn Berry with Michael Dunn. Vincent Price, who may be seen in the 20th century Fox picture, Dragon Wick. Now, act two of Shock. So that's the way it is. I have the coroner thinking that my wife died accidentally. There is only one witness to my killing of Margaret... And I have proven that witness insane. And then this fellow, this O'Neill, walks into my office from the office of the district attorney. Why? What's happened? What do they know? Dr. Cross, something's turned up that makes us consider the possibility that your wife's death wasn't an accident. You don't think she could have been murdered? We picked up a prowler yesterday in the vicinity of your lodge. He has a police record. And now you think he may have killed my wife? Well, I can't say until we've exhumed her body. Oh, but that's indecent. I won't permit that. Then we'll have to have a court order, Doctor. I'd hoped you'd be more understanding, more uh, anxious to see the killer caught and punished. You do want him caught, don't you? Why, yes, of course. Well, then how can you conscientiously stand in the way of the law, however distasteful his methods sometimes must be? I can't, of course, Mr. O'Neill. You have my full permission. Oh, thank you. You'll uh, hear from me soon, one way or the other. Elaine, they're going to exhume Margaret's body. They think some prowler might have killed her. Let them. But don't you understand? They weren't looking for anything before. Now they are, and they'll find it. And I say let them. They can't prove anything. Once they start asking questions, I'll lose control of myself. I'm shaky now, Elaine. 
Then if they find that Stuart girl and ask her questions, I am finished. Think for just a moment. What are you talking about? I'm talking about putting that troublesome woman out of the way. But Elaine... Elaine, I'm a doctor. You're a man in danger of his own life. Do something about it. Murder. Premeditated murder. Of course not. An unpredictable accident. How? You're the doctor. All night I have been thinking of the danger from the district attorney's office. From O'Neill. Thinking of Elaine's words. Thinking of Dr. Franklin Harvey lecturing on psychotherapy. Psychic shock is an affliction, true. But in psychiatry, artificially induced coma is a heaven-sent treatment for certain mental derangements. Such coma may be induced in various ways. Uh, let us consider the carbohydrate method. Great care must be taken to avoid accident. Failure to bring the patient out of coma in time may result in death. 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 Lieutenant Stewart, I've decided upon the treatment for your wife. Doctor, will it do the trick for Janice? We can only hope so. We, we can't promise anything. Well, anything is better than to have her go along the way she's been. All right, Doctor. Go ahead and try it. Good. Good. We'll begin treatment tomorrow morning. Oh. Hotel. War. Apartment. Regrets. Shall I bring her out of it now, Dick? Oh. Wait. Wait. Prisoner of war. Cabana Juan. Now? Wait. Bring her out of it now. September 10th. Induced deep coma, coma relieved. September 11th. Induced deep coma, coma relieved. September 12th. Induced deep coma, coma relieved. September the 13th. Come in. I hope I didn't get you out of bed so early in the morning. Oh, no, I go down to the hospital early these mornings. Uh -huh. I had to serve the papers, you know. Papers? Coroner's inquest. I see. What did the coroner find? Murder. What? Your wife was murdered. Are you sure? Yes, he was struck several times with a heavy silver candlestick. But how do you know all that? Microscopic fragments of wax and of silver in the wounds. I see. A criminal hasn't much of a chance anymore, has he? No, sir, he has not. Well, just uh, keeping you posted, Doctor. Is, is that all today? Yes, that's all, Doctor. See you at the inquest. Murder. Murder? Of course not. An unpredictable accident. Failure to bring the patient out of coma in time may result... In death. Yes, it's time now. It's time. Syringe, Miss Jordan. Maximum tolerance? The maximum. Yes, Doctor. Intravenous recovery outfit and adrenaline, one to one thousand ready. We won't need it, Miss Jordan, this time. I understand. Syringe ready, Doctor. Dr. Harvey. Hmm? Well, Lieutenant Stewart, uh, what's this? Doctor, you know that Dr. Cross is giving my wife treatments for shock, don't you? Uh, yes, 
We've had fine results with it in the past. Why? Well, I saw my wife yesterday after she came out of the coma. She still insisted that she saw Dr. Cross strike his wife with a candlestick. Yesterday, she said he's trying to kill her. Yes, a common delusion. And a reason for the treatment, I may add. But look, Doctor, Mrs. Cross is dead, isn't she? Yes, Pa. And the Crosses did live in the hotel where Janet was waiting for me when she went into coma. Yes. All right, look at today's paper. The coroner says she was murdered. Murdered? With a silver candlestick. Uh, just a moment now. When did your wife say that? Yesterday, before anyone knew anything about the murder and after she came out of the treatment. That's odd. Allowing even for the fact that her hallucination bordered on the facts by some remarkable coincidence. As a rule, patients are completely lucid and speak the truth when they come out of the treatment. Dr. Harvey, I don't think Janet was ever anything but in her right mind. Son, a quick trip to Dr. Cross's sanatorium is very much in order. <laughs> Elaine, I'm a doctor. I can't go through with this. You've got to go through with it now. Wheel that intravenous outfit over here. I won't let you do it. Get out of my way. No, I'll smash the equipment. You'll smash the equipment? Yes. No. You will not smash the equipment. Dick, don't touch me. You will not smash the equipment. Dick, keep away from me. You were going to make me do this. You... Please. I hate you. I think I ought to kill you. Dr. Cross... Professor Harvey. He's insane. He, he tried to kill me. Dr. Harvey, quick, my wife. The intravenous outfit, Professor. Well, hurry. Uh, I'll help you, Dr. Harvey. If you'll control the flow of the solution, I'll insert the needle. There. Now. Clap off, Dr. More solution. Faster. There. Yeah, that's good. Yes. And not a moment too soon. It's going to be all right, Janet, darling. It's going to be all right. September 13th. In the case of Janet Stewart, room 816C. O'Neill. Oh, oh yes, Mr. O'Neill. Do you mind if I finish writing this case history? Go ahead. Thank you. Janet Stewart, room 816C. I induced final and severe coma again today. Dr. Franklin Harvey completed the treatment successfully. The patient will recover. The case may be regarded as closed. All right, Mr. O'Neill. I'm ready. Shall we go? Vincent Price, Lynn Berry, and Michael Dunn for a splendid performance, and to their supporting cast, Lorene Tuttle, Joe Kearns, and Fred Howard. The radio adaptation of Shock was written by Milton Geiger. Music was supervised by Alfred Newman, and the production was under the direction of Robert L. Redd. Hollywood Star Time is presented each week at this time with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer, who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire home appliances. Electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Next week at this hour, Hollywood Star Time will present Victor Mature and June Haver in a brilliant radio production of the 20th Century Fox musical, My Gal Sal. This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. This is CBS, the
Columbia Broadcasting System.